if this first update statement encountered an error, that'll fail. But will the second one continue to run, or will it fail too because it never got that far? Well, let's try an experiment. Let's go execute add grant amount, and we're going to add this same one, but we're going to put the word 1,000 spelled out. Now we know that's going to fail, and it will fail on the first update statement. Well, let's see exactly what happens. Let's try another error. Let's execute the stored procedure, and we're going to put 003 and put null in. Now, why would null fail? Because grant has an amount that requires a not null. If you try to insert null into a not null field, it gives you an error. Let's execute this stored procedure with the null parameter. It says, cannot insert the null value into column amount table because it does not allow nulls. But wait a minute, the second statement ran. So this was just a statement termination. The second update statement ran. So this first statement caused an error drastic enough to make sure none of the statements in the stored procedure ran. The second statement was a slightly less severe error, but the second update in that stored procedure ran after the error. Well, here's what you can do. There is a statement that says, if you encounter any error of 11 or higher, you want batch termination. You can do that with what's known as transact abort. Now, any call to a stored procedure that results in an error with a severity of 11 or greater will result in batch termination.